evening. Good evening. Good evening. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the Second Congregational Church here in West Stafford, Connecticut. Uh, very happy to see all of you who came this evening. So if you would please join me in the unison call to worship as it is printed in the Lord. Here in the stillness of a winter's night, we gather to share the light of Christ, a light that shines in the darkness. We gather in the wonder of this night to share our joy and thanks for new life. is nearly over. Our waiting is nearly finished. Now is a time of fulfillment and celebration. In the darkness of night, we give thanks for life. We light the candle of hope. We light the candle of hope. Hope for ourselves and for God's beloved world. We light the candle of peace. candle of peace, peace in our hearts and on earth. We light the candle of joy. Candle of joy, joy to the world and within our whole being. We light the candle of love. The candle of love, the promise of God's love for us and for all creation. And now the hour has come and the season is fulfilled. We light the Christ candle, the light of the world, the light of possibility. Let us all pray together. Eternal, Eternal God, God, this holy night is radiant with the brilliance of your one true light. light. May, May that light illuminate our hearts. Our hearts and shine in our words and in deeds. May, May the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love represented by the birth in Bethlehem this night fill our lives and become part of all that we say and do. May we share the divine light of your Son, Jesus Christ, even as he humbled himself to share our humanity. Amen. First carol, or first opening hymn, is O Come All Ye Faithful, and there are printed versions in your bulletin. Oh 
this evening we tell the story of the birth of Christ in scripture and in carols. And the first lesson goes all the way back to the beginning. In Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 through chapter 2 verse 4. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures who move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And so it was. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Bobby. Our carol is, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Number 110, the pilgrimage. <laughs>
lesson is taken from the book of Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Please join us in singing the next carol that came upon the midnight clear. You'll find the lyrics in the bulletin. <laughs> Might be. 
But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Our carol is Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 120 from the Pilgrim. And they were terrified. 
But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared, with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Let us now join in singing the carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, found in your Pilgrim Hymnal 134, and the lyrics found in your bulletin.
reading comes from the Gospel of John. The first chapter, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling place among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let us join now in the carol, Joy to the World, number 130, in the Pilgrim Hymnal and also in your book. tried to capture some of the things that make Christmas Christmas. 
the sights, the sounds, the feelings. Apparently, that's what Christmas is. And most would agree. Actually, Christmas is about much more than just sharing warm emotions and memories. It's about what God supplies and what God shares. Christmas is about God's faithfulness made tangible through history. It's about how God has touched our lives with love. So what is Christmas? Well, Christmas is for people who have nothing. And it's also for people who need everything. So first, we'll talk about the people who have nothing. Would you believe that the text from Isaiah that we read this, this evening is 2,600 years old? And it's basically a Christmas greeting from God. God originally sent this greeting to those Jewish people who were exiled in Babylon, which is present-day Iraq in the 6th century before Christ was born. The Lord also had the prophet send this greeting to a ragtag handful of people who remained behind in Jerusalem, the once proud capital of the Jewish nation. Now, can you imagine their mindset? Whether they were hauled off to Babylon or remained in the ruins of Jerusalem, it must have seemed that their whole world was out of control. Their ancient homeland of Israel, once promised to their ancestor Abraham and his family, now laid in ruins. Their worship life was in shambles. The sacrifices they offered, which foreshadowed the work of the promised Savior, were no longer offered on the huge bronze altar outside the temple. In fact, the temple, built by the great King Salah, had been trashed and torched by the armies of Babylon. There must have been an ache in their hearts as these people prayed to God. They had nothing left. They had nothing. Is this how God's promise to Adam and Eve, to Abraham and to David would end? With a whimper? In the desert of the ancient Near East? Of course not. God is faithful. He sent a greeting of hope to these hopeless people. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. The God of faithful love and mercy came to his weary and lonely people with a message of good news. God would make it possible for those exiled in Babylon to return home. The Lord of the universe would grab the reins of world government and would send the Persian Empire to topple the crowd of Babylon. The Babylonian exiles would return back home to Jerusalem. God would establish peace. And so messengers ran ahead from Babylon back to Jerusalem, proclaiming this wonderful news. Hey, Mom and Dad are coming home. Babylon is conquered. The exile is over. What a message for those who had nothing. Families would be reunited. No wonder those messengers seem to have beautiful feet. Their feet brought good news. And we can relate to this Christmas greeting because in reality, we are people who have nothing. 
As we stand before God, we see our sins are caused for a spiritual exile. God has every reason to cast us out of his presence, to send us away from his goodness. Adam and Eve forsook the complete, wholesome peace that was theirs in paradise. And as a result, we lack that perfect peace. In fact, we don't even deserve it. We don't even deserve the little blessings God gives us in our lives. We don't deserve our homes, our families, our livelihood. We don't deserve even this church. We don't deserve God's message of hope. The truth is we reserve, we deserve to be exiled to sin and death forever. We too are a people who have nothing. Oh, well, we may have tinsel and toys, Christmas lights and presents. We may have the things that provide temporary pleasure. Somebody might think that's enough. Our sinful hearts may think it's enough to hear Christmas carols on the radio, to see the lights in the fir trees, to taste Christmas cookies, or receive a peck on the cheek under the mistletoe. But that's not enough. Such things cannot fill our hearts with peace. It's at Christmas that many people feel depressed and alone. It's at Christmas that we miss our loved ones who have passed on. The glitter of the holidays just isn't enough to keep peace in our hearts. That is not what Christmas is. For Christmas is nothing and we have nothing if we don't have God's greeting of good tidings. And then for the people who need everything. The God of history, the all-powerful and merciful God, intervened in the world's scene for us all. He made it possible for us to have peace. He gives us everything we need. <coughs> Messengers have come to us, and they are <coughs> messengers. The Christmas angel came to the shepherds of that first Christmas announcing, Peace on earth. And God has sent this Christmas greeting to you. <coughs> Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. <coughs> That's what Christmas is all about. And that's just what we need. God gives us what we need right here in his holy word. He gives us a message of hope and love. He gives us the ability to receive and believe it. We've been given exactly what we need. God has delivered us. That's the perfect gift. The Hebrew word for deliverance is the root word for the name Jesus. The name Jesus means he saves or he delivers. Jesus Christ is what Christmas is all about. The reason for the season, as we've heard over and over, he is the Son of God and Son of Mary who came to trade himself for us in life and death. The one who had every right to condemn and exile us found a way to pardon us without violating his own perfection. Christ came to deliver us from the guilt of sin and the fear of death. He came to deliver us safely to his home in heaven. Christmas is all about needy people and how God has supplied all of those needs. He's provided the best gift of all, our deliverance. 
In fact, he's even unwrapped the gift for us. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. God has given us just what we need. His strong, holy arm. He's laid it bare. He rolled up his sleeves and went to work for us. Most of us are familiar with the old Popeye the Sailor cartoons. Yeah. And inevitably, Popeye would find himself in a bad situation. He'd get beat up by Bluto and he'd be worn out and weak. So he turned to his trusted can of spinach. And as soon as he'd eat the spinach, his muscles would grow, his strength would be revealed, and it was usually impressive. Popeye's muscles would be pictured as a battleship or as a powder keg of dynamite. He revealed his strength by showing his muscles. Much like Popeye, I don't think she remembers Popeye. <laughs> Much like Popeye, God reveals his arm for you. God rolls up his sleeve, reveals his muscle, and went to work to deliver you and me. He demonstrates his strength, but it's not pictured as a tank, or a mighty army, or as some Marvel comic superhero. Our Lord unwrapped his glorious might by allowing himself to be wrapped up as a small child in swaddling cloths and placed in a manger. The Savior laid bare his powerful arm by covering himself in flesh. He revealed his splendor and strength by living, dying, and rising again for you and me. Again, we've heard the good tidings of the angels. The messengers have come to our hearts again and brought wonderful news of deliverance from sin, death, and the devil. Every time we hear the Christmas message, God's good news greeting, we are assured that we are not sentenced forever to live in an, live in an inside out, upside down world. In Bethlehem, God came to assure us that he has a better life in store for us, a life forever in his presence. So with you know, deep apologies to Percy Faith, Christmas is more than holly, more than tinsel, sparkling snow or children's laughter. Christmas is not for people who want everything and need nothing. Christmas is not for people I just said that. Christmas is for people who have nothing and who need everything. Christmas is God's good news greeting of peace to a world of sinners. It's the good news of great joy that will be for all people. And that today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and he is Christ the Lord. That's what Christmas is. Amen. <laughs> offering is a little bit different than most. A Christmas offering as it's called now, used to be called Veterans of the Cross. I think all of the money that is collected this evening goes through the United Church of Christ to pastors like me, who serve little congregations that perhaps only work part-time and didn't have all the benefits and didn't have a retirement fund. So when they do retire, they find themselves a little short. So the United Church of Christ established the Veterans of the Cross Fund to assist them after they retire so that they may be cared for as they cared for their congregations. The 
be as generous as you can for the pastors of small congregations that need some care.
house to your house. May you share in the gifts of this season. May love the promise of generations attend you, attend you. Joy, the gift of life together, fill you. Peace, the desire of neighbor and nations find you. And hope, the horizon of faith, sustain you. And may you have a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Amen. Amen. Amen.